I seen something about uh, Baker Mayfield returning this week, man. I thought I, I thought it was a little. I double take that. I wasn't for sure. Okay. No, no, yeah. Uh, P- PJ Walker got benched at the half. I think he had like. Actually, let me pull up his stat line. I got it right. Like here. he got benched early. Uh, I didn't catch that one this week, man. I th- I think it was at halftime for real, but it was pretty bad for him, man. And then Baker came in, but see, <laughs> it's something different about. So PJ Walker, I got it right here. He went three for ten with two interceptions. Ooh, that's brutal. Zero passing yards. No, no, I'm sorry. Nine passing yards, one rush for six yards, which is pretty terrible. Three, you said three for ten? And then Baker showed up. Yeah, three for ten, two picks, nine yards. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Negative <laughs> one fantasy points. <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, Baker came in off the bench and threw 14 of 20, 155, and two. Okay. So, that's not bad. But – I don't think that means Baker's back. I just they didn't game plan for Baker Mayfield. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? They so, don't. I mean, they don't have the answer. Carolina over there. Don't get too excited. Yeah, I don't think they had the answer or the guy over there right now. Clearly, um, but I mean, they just give it false signals. Like, are you tanking? Are you not? I don't know. If you was, if you wanted to tank, I would leave a PJ Walker in there. But if you still um, kind of showing you trying to figure out what's going on, maybe they need to evaluate some different guys over there. Maybe a DJ Moore. Uh, to see, like, maybe he, he came along a little bit with P.J. Walker and see if him and Baker can have a connection or, you know, some of these other guys, you know, that's the only thing I could think of when you uh, kind of just think about that situation there. Bro, imagine what OBJ would say if Carolina tried to call. Uh, oh, he would hang up the him. phone. He, 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 <laughs> like, who? Baker. And then his pops going to call. And they see. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was laughing about. That's so like, funny, bro. bro. Uh, but nah, that's that's crazy, man. Especially so, because Carolina, that division is still wide open, but, I mean, they just got to – and they got all them picks from San Francisco, so they're in a prime position if they can draft well to put a little something together. Yeah. But what they – even if they were to win that division, bro, they would get waxed on in the playoffs. I mean, that's what's crazy, man. Like, when you when you say, like, okay, like, like a Carolina Panthers team, they're not out of it, right? I've seen a stat today – it's like the Detroit Lions sitting at two and six are two games out of the wild card spot. You know how crazy that is? That, yeah. Like what? What are the and Packers? Then, what three and five? Three and six. Three and six. Let me. But it, but yeah, uh, whatever it is, you got you got to think about it. The Packers play the Cowboys this week. Detroit gets a chance to play Chicago, who I believe had their yeah, first place over there. They they easily right back in the thick of this thing, man. And uh, like all the teams, like just seeing Tampa Bay and as bad as they was playing, just to be back number one, right in that spot, you know what I mean, over there. You know what I mean? It's it's wide open, man. You know what I mean? Some good teams will miss the playoffs this year, just just based off of the fact how good the NFC's been this year. Like the Rams may not make it, or you know, it's a lot of teams. It's funny because I got into a little, a little, not an argument, but a little conversation, disagreement on Twitter because I was pretty much asking like. Is it worth it to say F them picks for one Super Bowl ring if it's just going to be a mess after the fact? You know what I mean? Because the Rams, they look terrible, dude. I mean, but... They look bad. Like, 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 like we, we talk, we say that, right? They look bad, but then the conference is, like, so wide open right now, right? there. I, I believe the Rams, are, they lost that game. I think they're now sitting at three and five themselves, I believe. I'm going to pull up some records. Yeah, I, I believe the Rams are sitting at three and five. So I mean, one thing I will I would say when you think about teams like that, um, I get them the benefit of doubt because you never know these teams like this, like a Sean McVay, or I get a benefit of doubt to a Tom Brady who, um, believe it or not, they just know how to get hot at the right time. So, um, yes, you know what I mean I, I think it's crazy that they've been going about things, but they do have two Super Bowls uh, appearances to hang their head on, man. Um, you know and. We're waiting on them to fall off, but I just think, you know what I mean, when it happens, we, we'll know. I believe you'll see Aaron Donald retire and, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys fizzle out. And I believe as soon as that happens, Sean McVay going to be like, all right, I'm out of here now. What was that uh, analyst job you was talking about? Like, well, I'm getting Yeah, I think Amazon's trying to scoop him up yeah. for all the money. He's not going to stick around for yeah. the rebuild at all. No, 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 not a chance. I think he's going to leave a hot mess behind. Uh, the Rams are three and five. They're in third place. Yeah. The 49ers are four and four and the surprise Seattle Seahawks are six and three. That's what it's, I want to talk about, weird, man. Seattle. Stuff, man. I want to read off. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, no. I, we let's let's talk about Seattle. But to answer your question, I think um, 
do I say F them picks, right? I think depending on the spot you are in, um, the type of window that you have open, then I wouldn't say F them picks. You know what I mean? But if, let, let's say the Rams, for them to be where they are and it's not looking so good and then to be constantly still calling, trying to, you would think at some point you're trying to get some picks back or or, or whatever. I'm not saying trading on pieces away. But I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody should be taking a strategy. Only certain teams. Like I don't mind it for Buffalo or uh, you see how Philly. Some of these teams that still got quarterbacks on these young deals, uh, early deals, Jalen Hurts. But I mean, even though they paid a Josh Allen, Buffalo just felt like they one piece away. You know what I mean? But right. um, you know, not everybody can do that. Like like you say, eventually it comes back to bite you. It will. It's Seattle man, they they're good and they killed this last draft and they finessed the hell out of the Denver Broncos. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, they got finesse for Jamal Adams. They had to get somebody back. It was like, look. I, oh, I forgot. About, bro, I forgot. <laughs> bro, that's so funny. He just at home, and they're over here wrecking shit. That's crazy. Oh, I forgot about I didn't even realize the fact that he was out this year. He definitely went out early. But, man, that good ball club, man. I think we, we were speaking about it earlier where I was like, you know, some of these teams where we just kind of like just waiting for the other shoe to fall. Um, like them, I, I picked against them multiple times. Uh, I just think waiting for the other shoe to fall. And, I'm, man, look, they're a good team. Like the defense is not as terrible, even though they started pretty bad, um, you know, I mean, early early in the year. But the defense came on late. Geno Smith, look, he he looks like Russell Wilson. I thought Geno was in Denver. You know, what I mean, I don't know what's going on. Right. Freaky Friday, whatever you want to call it. But um, hey, they good, good, good team, man. The weapons still there. Lock it. You know, Kenneth Walker's a beast. That's crazy. Man, sh- I ain't mad at it. Bro. I let me ask you this. So, is there? A, do you think there's a turning in the of the to- turning of the torch as far as the uh, running back position in the NFL? Kenneth Walker, Damian Pierce. Like, are those two top 10 backs in your mind right now? Top 10? Uh, you, you might, just, a, just a short list. I'm, I'm going to think just a short list. I would have a Derrick Henry up there. Let me just count them out. Derrick mm-hmm. Henry, um, Saquon, Nick Chubb. Damn, and it's crazy okay, because you, you talk about those young guys. Brees Hall looks so good to me uh, before that injury, man. Um, that MetLife turf, bro. You know? As of right now, Josh Jacobs look he, he look good, but I don't even know if I could put him. I, I think so, man. Demar Pierce, I told you, bro. I was hearing all the hype. Um, I did see him in the preseason, and then just seeing him against Philly in prime time, I'm like, he's a real deal. Like, no question. Mm-hmm. I think Swift when he plays, he's a top back. So it's a lot of these guys that's got questions around him. But I do think if you look at it right now, like Kenneth Walker, like like, like he passes the eye test. Uh, he's a dude. <laughs> Bro, he's yeah, a beast. Yeah, so. The way, like, the way he just breaks through these tackles, man. That second touchdown he had on uh, last Sunday, man. The effort he put into yeah. that run was insane. That was something to admire. Switching over to Frank Wright, Jeff Saturday, and the Indianapolis Colts, bro. What is going on over there? And how does that make any sense? It doesn't. It doesn't, bro. I, I thought, truth, truthfully, seeing the seeing the news, man. I, I thought it was like one of those fake tweets at first. I'm like. I had to coach right. sign Jeff Saturday. I'm like, Jeff Saturday don't coach. Uh, then I looked and I seen it was real. I'm like, what the hell is going on here, man? I don't I don't know, man. Uh, call it a tank job. I'm not – I don't know what you can call that situation. Like, I don't think he can go in there and obviously turn this thing around. Maybe they play hard for him. But how much um, X's and O's or, you know what I mean, does, does he know? I mean, it's different. It's different coming from my analyst's job to a coach. I mean, we've seen – People adore, but they've been previous coaches before. We've never seen a, a quite a jump like this. And I believe mm-hmm. his uh, his office coordinator. I, I'm not sure of his name. I have to look it up. But I believe he was like a he hired a, like a high school coach to come along with him. So this is definitely unprecedented. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, I think the GM over there he just he just trying to do anything at this point. Um, it's surprising to me to make these moves like uh, you know mid season. Um, right. And then just to think about that 360, uh, the day, well, I'm going to call it a 180. Um, just since Andrew Luck has left, right? Um, you know, uh, it's been a it's mess. Been a mess, man. Uh, you had Phillip Rivers in here, uh, old quarterback. Um, then you bring in a Carson Wentz, who maybe, maybe or not short in the stick. Has he done enough to prove he should have still been the guy there? Um, no, he, you know, um, Matt Ryan, the offensive line has digressed big time. I don't know what's going on with it. What's, uh, um, Nelson, Quentin Nelson, he doesn't even look the same, and I, I'm just, well, I'm just wondering, like, I don't know what's going on. The defense, I, yeah, go ahead. I think Quentin Nelson's having to compensate for a lot of bad bodies around him, and that is a degrading offensive line, like you mentioned. But 
I do think Frank Wright did get the most out of Phillip Rivers in his last year. And Wentz wasn't that terrible, man. I think he was 27 TDs, seven interceptions last year. It wasn't year. bad. And that's decent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can get that out of Carson Wentz, like you're doing a good job, but then you can't go lose to Jacksonville in a make or break game. You know what I mean? But, but to be fair, they lost to Jacksonville in a make or break game. And then as soon as this year started, they got waxed by Jacksonville. So I'm like, I'm right. like, all right, now, like, like, what was that much difference? I think the biggest thing to me was I didn't expect Jonathan Taylor to take that step back. And then I think it was a question I asked you earlier in the year when I was like, um, Matt Eberflus. I, 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 we, we're very familiar with him in Dallas. I thought he was like one of the better coaches in this league. You see what he's doing with Chicago right now. And I, and I wondered how, how big of an impact would that make? You know what I mean? Because he always right. had that defense like top five, top three um, in the stint over there in, uh, in Nevis. I, I do think too. Um, obviously, it's unfortunate Frank Reich lost his job, but I think my early prediction is Doug Peterson scoops him up. They get back together over in Jacksonville. He might just come in as like a quarterback coach or something and help out with uh, developing Trevor Lawrence. Frank Reich, he is the one that uh, I believe he won the Super Bowl with Philadelphia yeah, yeah. under uh, Doug Peterson. Yeah, he'll end up somewhere with pretty. He's a good coach. Good then coach, last, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about, I heard an interesting stat, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders have blown three 17 point leads this Perfect season. Segue. I'm glad you brought that up. Since 1960, they've had five 17 point leads blown prior to this season. And now they're already at three under Josh McDaniels. That's, and that is insanity. Tough, that's alone for anybody coaching. to lose. I, I know how bad it feels to be up a game. And you just laid back like, man, we look good. <laughs> and, then, and then all hell breaks you know loose. What I mean? And then at the end of the game, you don't know what happened. I'm ready to punch a wall, kick something in, man. Look, um, it's bad, man. After a game like that? Man, we talk about. After a game like yeah, that? Jacksonville, they, they, no, we, like, them and Seattle are like mirror opposites. Like, we talked about waiting for the shoe to fall. Well, on the flip side, this is another team where I'm sitting there every week and I'm like, oh, you're going to win this week. Next week, I'm like, well, they, they got to win, right? Back against the wall this week. Then the next week is the same thing over and over, man. Um, And, and you talk about hot seats. I, I do wonder how long of a leash the, does he have over there in, um, you know, in Vegas. Maybe he, he sticks on this year, but maybe he's just not a good head coach. Um, You know, some people are, are just good coordinators, and, and that's okay, man. So I, I'm wondering if they can turn it around. But, man, it's too much talent over there to be looking the way it's looking, man. For real. doesn't make sense. I don't think this is going to be McDaniels last year. I think Derek Carr needs to play better. And this could be his last year with the Raiders. I can see that happening. Josh McDaniels might just convince them. I mean, well, man, they don't have any draft picks. Said Josh Mc... Nah. Nah. They don't... Ooh. Green, that's Green Bay's picks, right? All right, so let me ask you a, a question. So if I had a... If you had to pick one coach that would... Who, who's getting fired early? Um, you have Josh McDaniels... Kev Klingsbury, Dennis Allen, or Ron Rivera? I think Ron is next to go. And I say that because I think where New Orleans is right now, they, they play physical. They're kind of tough. But Dennis, I mean, he's a bad coach. But you don't have Drew Brees. I mean, it's kind of a mess over there, like cap-wise right. as well. Michael Thomas is a disaster. I think he has a solid leash. McDaniels, I don't, I don't think that you can give up on him that quickly. Okay. I'm, All right. Ten, okay, I got you. So Cliff Cliff just got that extension though. I think it's more likely they find a way to get rid of Kyler than Cliff. Kyler just got the bag. So yeah. Right. But who would be willing to take that off them? Well, it's, so, it's easier mean, to it's Arizona's easier to find fucked. a well, I don't want to say that either, but it's hard to find a quarterback in this league. You can find a good coach. You know what I mean? Right. Um long as you you're willing to do your due diligence. Um so so the answer was Ron Rivera, but then okay, now to focus back on that division. Um, obviously you have, um, your boy over there and, um, damn, off the top of my head, the Chargers, who, 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 who oh, Staley, who's been in the hot seat quite, you know what I mean? Quite often you have, um, Hackett who hasn't looked great. So you got a lot of guys over there. The only guy that we ain't talking about, Andy Reid, which one lasts is the longest out of those three. Well, which, who will be the first to go in that list and that? Ooh. Yeah. I think Riv Riverboat Ron's got to go. Nah, I don't want to tell you my answer on it, that one, but it it's got no, it's got to be right, Hackett. All right, all right, all right. Hackett, Hackett, it's got to be Hackett, go, man. Like, I think out of all those guys, at least I, I've seen Raiders play good in spurts, right? 
and I've seen obviously the Chargers. They they're telling the team. I've I've seen them look good under him. Um, but I think with Hackett, he he just the play calling isn't good. You're an offensive coordinator. Um, I, I thought you know coming from Green Bay, maybe you had some you know coming along with you, but maybe it was a Rod. I don't know. A Rod hasn't looked good with him without him, but nah. You know, I mean, you got to get your top quarterback, good roster. Um, yeah, I, I think he's done a terrible job so far. So that'll be my answer as well. Yeah, it's it's got to be. I mean, what they're doing is crazy. But I think with like McDaniel's, his resume with the Patriots might bail him out a little bit. But I think uh, Mark Davis, he's a little too cheap to. I mean, if if they let McDaniel's go, bro, then he's going to be paying Gruden to go away still, as well as McDaniel's. Damn, I'm at. And he's already working to hey, look, get Gruden. Look, they done, the they done got Jeff Saturday. You talk about unprecedented. Maybe, maybe they need to call me over there, man. You know what I mean? And put me in a nice, nice little interview. Give me some money, man. And then they could fire me. I could be, you know what I mean? Sitting on my ass. Bro, I'm not going to get fired in Denver if they want me, bro. What? I'll go lose a game oh, for yeah. you. We're going to tank. You know what I mean? I might even win you one shit. Hey, whatever. But nah, nah. It's some, definitely some inter- interesting things going around the league, man. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, trade deadlines finally passed, man. Uh, we about to make this final stretch, man. I um I know before the season we made our predictions. So um, if you had to make a Super Bowl prediction at this point, who are your two teams? Who you got? No? Hold on one Four second. Four teams. No, no, no. So I'm going to tell you right now who I think the top five teams in the NFL are. Um, from all the divisions. And obviously you got Buffalo, but that all depends on this Josh Allen situation. I think best case scenario for the Miami Dolphins is Allen goes down. Uh, you know what I mean? And yeah. I- I'm trying to think. I'm sorry. Let me think how to say this. I think right now in the NFC, your best teams are the Dallas Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Vikings. Right. But I don't I'm not sold on the Eagles, man. I think that the offense they're running is not sustainable. And I think when they play a team that'll run the ball down their throat like Tennessee, that they're gonna come back to earth. Yeah. I know Jalen Hurts went off and threw those four touchdowns, but that was against a bad team and they were just showing off. Like, oh, you guys think we can run watch this? Miami though, man, Tua, he should have like four thousand yards passing right now. If he could just leave these guys, <sighs> bro, bro, they don't lose with Tua. He just throws the they don't lose. They they don't. <laughs> but what's crazy is he throws so many balls that should be getting picked off, bro. And every single ball he throws downfield is short. Yeah. And these receivers have to run the opposite direction to catch it. Like, everything should be like a 75-yard touchdown, but these guys keep having to back. But you know what's crazy about that, right? In to think, I mean, it sounds crazy, but when you're a cornerback, right, and you're guarding a guy like, uh, let's say, a Waddle or a Tyreek Hill, yes, when a, when a – a quarterback throws the ball long and it leads him. If if you're beat like that, yes, that's I mean you're beat, you're beat. But the hardest thing is to guard a guy that fast and then turn around, try to avoid making pass interference with him and then still exactly. So I mean it's kinda it's it's a bad thing, but then it works out for them too, because man, um, what you gonna stop in your tracks when Tyreek Hill got you beat and make a play for the ball? Most of the time they ain't got time to turn their head around and make a play because you know they didn't get burnt so bad. So it's working. I get what you're saying though, it's working. Yeah. Let, let, let me, so the best team in the NFC to me right now, and it's not because I'm a homer, but I, I do think it's the Cowboys, man. And if they can make a move for OBJ, like we talked about in the uh, previous episode, I, like it. I, I think that's the type of move that changes everything, man. That changes the scope of things. And the AFC, I think the top dog is the Chiefs, but I still think the Black Horse is the Tennessee Titans, man. If Ryan Tannehill's playing that game Sunday night, man, they win that game. And then, you know, uh, I, I like that. So I, I would say that, you know, it's crazy. Like like you just talked about the Chiefs. It's like, yes. Um, I get on the benefit of the doubt because I just know when it's playoff time, you know me, Andy Reid, Mahomes, um, you know, I felt like maybe even like last year, you know what I mean? I felt like that was that was supposed to be the team to win it all. Um, between them and Buffalo, I don't know how it didn't end up that way. But um, Chiefs and then like you say, man, I'm not scared of the Vikings. Um I don't want to take nothing away from what they've done though. Um they've played good. Um like same thing to the Eagles. Um, you know, they they've had some good wins. Um and you could say yes, they beat the best two teams in the NFC. But um, you know, I don't want to take nothing away from them. But you know, I mean you, you beat a Cooper Rush. 
You know what I mean? How, however y'all feel about that, we'll, we'll see him again in December. And then Kirk Cousins, he's another guy just don't – we we all know what he does in primetime anyway. Um, I think they're frauds, but they've they've, they've, they've been good, man. They're, they're a good team. I don't think they're an elite team. So I don't want to take them away from them. But they call them Super Bowl contenders. I can't do so. So um, I, I do like those two picks. The, and I guess, too, another thing, uh, the reason I like Dallas and the uh, the Vikings over the Eagles is their indoor team. So if one of those guys gets a uh, home field advantage, I mean, you don't have to worry about the cold weather. Whereas in Philadelphia, the scary part is the way they're running <laughs> yeah. this ball. They play outside. Yeah. Might got to go Philly, man, uh, take this thing, man. But, but I would say this before you hit your point. Cold weather teams, right? You got these teams that's on the back end, the highest matching up right now. They might just run into a, a team like San Fran, you know what I mean? The first, you know what I mean? First game coming off that bye. If they do get that bye, you know what I mean? They get a team like like uh, Buccaneers, even though they haven't looked this good this late, man. Uh, I just think some of these teams will get hot at the right team, right at, at the right time. We've seen 49ers do it last year. Kyle Shanahan, we know what Brady does. They they probably going to turn things around. I'm willing to bet on it. Um, Even though it doesn't look as strong right now, um, I, I think it's going to be a battle to the end. You know what I mean? It's going to be a sight to see how it turns out. I think, too, like best case scenario for the rest of the NFC is if you can get Philadelphia to play outside, Hurts isn't going to be able to throw the ball when the weather gets bad. Oh, nah. Nah. And they're going to be – like you can just sell out for the run and let them just overthrow whoever, yeah. you know what I mean? It's so, all gimmicky, man. That that – exactly. Best, I'm, I'm just not sold on that I, offense. I think uh, – I don't want to call it a blueprint, but I wonder why like more teams didn't do this, and why, especially we didn't we didn't do it because we got the horses too. Um, just watching that that uh, Texans game back, notice like Jalen Hurts, like whether he was gonna do the run pass option, whatever. They had one guy that was coming in there like it was fifty. Yeah, it was one. Yeah, um, damn, I can't think of his name off the top uh, of my head, but he was coming in there to blow Hurts up every time they did that read option, whether he was gonna give it to the running back or not. He didn't care. He was like, look, we're going – y'all, everybody else going to do what they think inside, but Hurts, look, every time you give me this look, I'm going to smack you. And I, I, I love that. Right, I, absolutely. I that. So there might be some teams take, you know what I mean, deep into this playoffs as, uh, you know what I mean, as we get later into the year. <laughs>